The information presented is for informational purposes only. The opinions expressed are not necessarily the opinions of any Daikin company. This information should not be confused for accounting, legal, medical, or other professional advice. Please seek advice from a qualified professional for any specific questions. Welcome to the Accelerated HVAC Success Program. My name is Ben Middleton. I'm the National Sales Training Manager for the Daikin, Goodman, and Amana Brands. Today, I am joined here with Kelly Hernsberger, and we're gonna be talking about refrigerants. Kelly, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Dan. Glad to be here. So, you know, we got a lot of changes happening when it comes to refrigerants, right? We've got this phase down that's happening in 2024, where we're gonna phase down even further than we already have with all of the HFCs. And then in 2025, we make this big shift to these low GWP refrigerants. How has Daikin begun to address this problem? Yeah, a good, great question, Ben. Uh, well, we, we, we definitely could see this coming. We understood the regulations. And in 2021, we decided to launch our first product of Atmosfera. And that was our first uh, opportunity to express our 32 in the marketplace. It's a mini split system, one to one. Uh, so that was our first um, objective is to get the product into the market. And then, uh, of course, we have a lot of energy right now in our regulatory group to make sure building codes are getting updated. Hmm. People are aware of training. So there's a lot of activity by Daikin as a company in all of our brands to make sure there's awareness. Are you aware of any differences? You know, we transitioned from R22 to 410A. Uh, how is this going to be different in, in our transition? Oh, love that question. Get it a lot in the marketplace, too. And, uh, you know, so contractors are either nervous or they just don't understand what this transition is going to look like. And so, uh, you know, from 22 to 410, we had to do a little bit of training, but mm. not a lot of difference. You know, uh, maybe charging was a little bit different. We're going back to an easier technique of charging mm. uh, because our 32 is a single component, a single refrigerant, okay. no blend, right? And so uh, you can charge it in liquid or gas, okay? No manipulating the bottle and mm -hmm. turning it upside down and moving it around and such. So it's a little easier to charge with. Um, and so I think contractors just need to understand the, the classification of the refrigerant seems a little bit different. It's, a, it's an A2L. Mm. And so people are wondering, hey, what's this A2L classification? Well, it's mildly flammable. Hmm. Uh, but, um, you know, in terms of just safety, you know, it's, it's really no different than 410 gas today. Okay. Um, you know, Daikin touts their three core technologies. They have inverter technology, heat pump technology, and then, of course, there's the refrigerant management. How does right. this play in Daikin's favor as we look at this transition? Yeah, I, I love that. Uh, I love that concept. Uh, First of all, we are masters of inverter, heat pump, mm -hmm. and refrigerant control. Um, so what we're able to do with R32 is utilize our, our global experience of design with R32. Because if you think about it, like overseas, mm -hmm. uh, let's say in Europe or Asia, uh, 410 gas was replaced with R32. Uh, and so we have this experience where we're able to design and utilize less refrigerant in the system and still get the same or if not more BTU output. Uh, so uh, that strength of design and mm -hmm. that heritage with those three core technologies, it's really gonna be paying off uh, with our transition to R32. So you, you and your group, you look a lot into the future and, and what HVAC may look like in the yeah. future. How do you see Daikin taking those core technologies and then incorporating that with R32 in terms of maybe the heat pump challenge or some of these other big initiatives that are that have been set out. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. That's actually a really fun project that we're working on right now, Ben. It's uh, uh, the uh, Department of Energy put out mm -hmm. a, uh, a challenge for manufacturers to engage in a new level of design for heat pumps. And they call it the cold climate heat pump challenge. Mm -hmm. 
And so you imagine in the northern uh, climates, uh, climate zones five, six, seven, um, there's going to be a big initiative to decarbonize there. But how do you do it? Mm. You've got to have a strong heat pump. And R32 affords us that capability uh, because we have a lot of BTU capacity inherent in the refrigerant. Uh, we have a lot of efficiency there. And we are, we are putting out designs that uh, can give us 100% heating capacity at 5 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, wow. And um, we're still giving over 70% capacity at minus 15. Hmm. So really strong heat pump designs with R32. So, I mean, we're talking a lot about R32 and playing in our favor. Is, is R32 going to be more expensive? Uh, great question. I don't believe it will. In fact, I think it's going to be an advantage uh, for a contractor to accept R32 as their next refrigerant with our equipment. And it's notably just because it's a single component refrigerant. Mm -hmm. um, there are other choices that I think are going to uh, populate the market as well in the future, but they're blends. Mm -hmm. So it takes extra, uh, you know, industrial capabilities to, to make those blends. And I think that cost is going to get really passed on to the contractor, uh, distributor, contractor, and consumers. Uh, so that's going to be uh, uh, an advantage to have R32 in the market. It's more of a commodity. And the other, the other refrigerants that, that will likely come up in conversations, uh, they are sometimes as much as 70% R32. Oh. Yeah. Okay. We often refer to those others as watered down R32. <laughs> yeah. You know, when you talk about that, you, you touched a little bit. A12 is kind of scary. And, and we hear all kinds of rumors out in, in the field, mm -hmm. different contractors saying things like maybe – Hey, we're going to propane or something like that, which could be, you know, a, a very highly flammable gas if, if that was happening. Is it safe? Yeah, R32, remarkably safe. And in fact, when the industry was positioning itself to, to accept this A2L uh, and we understood the challenge, professionals from um, multiple industrial companies, OEMs, refrigerant companies all came together at a HRI mm -hmm. and formed task force to investigate, study, and promote the safety and, and understand it more deeply. So um, I think that effort was really strong, and we uh, debunked a lot of myths about uh, A2Ls, and we, we are showing the industry how safe it is. Okay. Um, did Daikin create R32? No, no, and I think a lot of people, you know, say that because we had, we did have a lot of patents on its use. Mm. We've since released those, but no, Daikin did not create R32, but we've mastered the use of it in refrigeration circuits. So that's, and so Daikin didn't create R32. You said they mastered the use. Why did Daikin decide R32 was the right way to go compared to all of these other options that may be out there? Yeah, <clears throat> I get that question a lot. And the, the simple uh, answer is that we understand how to design and get a maximum advantage for the consumer. Uh, the contractor wins because the consumer is getting more BTU carrying capacity out of that gas. Mm. Um, it is superior in terms of ease of use, charge, recycle, reuse. So there are so many aspects about R32 that um, formed our opinion, not to mention it was globally accepted already in over 190 million installations when we chose it. So that proof of condition, proof of installation in the marketplace was really another deciding factor. In fact, didn't R32 start being used here way back in 2016 here in North America? That's right. Yeah, it has. Uh, so there were lots of applications where R32 was introduced. Hmm. And uh, so it has roots in the marketplace already. And people, people really didn't know that just yet. And isn't it even a component of 410A? It is. In fact, it's 50% of 410A hmm. uh, as a gas. So, um, and when you, when you think about its widespread use, it's already been in the market for quite some time. Contractors just maybe didn't know the composition of the gases they were already using. So, if a 
contractor listening to this today says, hey, I, I think I might want to learn more about R32 or, or maybe they want to start taking advantage of some of these benefits that you've talked about, how can a contractor start taking advantage of those benefits today? Oh man, that's that's right down this uh, podcast alley today because the Learning Campus has a significant amount of material ready and available for contractors to just jump in and get the training. They can also receive the training from industry uh, associations mm -hmm. such as ACA uh, or NATE. Um, there are lots of opportunities for them to learn the proper uh, safety protocols. And uh, in fact, Daikin as a company uh, has the proper training for them to be certified and walk away with confidence to go into the marketplace. And isn't there, aren't there even some products that are out there today and depending on the state that you're in that would be available for contractors to start installing? Yeah, today? yeah, I mentioned earlier, Atmosphere is mm -hmm. one of our one-to-one -one mini splits that we have today. It's an R32 design system. Uh, and I, I would tell you, it's also a very remarkable system in terms of capacity, uh, both in the south and in the north for cooling or heating. Mm. It's got extended capacity because of the properties of R32. Um, and it's easy to install, really easy to get started with that product. And multiple states um, have opened up their, their regulations and building codes to accept it. So there's going to be multiple options in 2025, right? Uh, there's not going to be just one single refrigerant. So our industry is yeah. changing there. Will a contractor need to pick one? You know, it's an a interesting concept. Um, what I think is going to be happening in the future, Ben, is I know that contractors are not going to shy away from servicing multiple brands of equipment mm. that might have different refrigerants. Just like today, if you had a refrigeration business or you know, uh, a residential business or a commercial business, you might have a service truck that already carries multiple jugs of refrigerant, different, different types. So I see that happening. But what I think is going to be uh, different uh, moving into this next transition, I think we're going to see contractors that acclimate to R32 because of its ease of use hmm. and installation capability. So I think there's going to be a lot of installation trucks out there with just one refrigerant, and I think it's going to be R32. Well, thank you so much, Kelly, for joining us today. I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. Do you have any closing thoughts that you want to give our guests? Well, I tell you, I think that uh, it's very exciting to be a part of uh, Daikin, no matter which brand, if it's Daikin, Amana, or Goodman. Uh, we have a tremendous effort right now to make sure that our quality is always there, our service is always there, our training is always there. So I would just um, uh, create a level of awareness and excitement for contractors to be a part of our, our group. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks, Ben. Appreciate it.